Today I'm going to show you how to make an embossed metal texture inside of Photoshop using the glass filter. I'm going to show you how to make the actual texture, recolor it, and also add patinas to it. If you like this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Visit prettywebs.com for more design resources for your blog and business. Before we get started with the tutorial, I wanted to give you an idea of the concept that I was going for with this design. When I did this, I was looking at things like this, like these um, metal ceiling tiles. And I found this design right here. This is just a quick Google search for embossed metal because I knew the style that I was going for. I just didn't know what it was called. So these are actually tin or metal ceiling tiles and that's what I was going for. But I did find this one and I love the look of this. So something like this is what we're going to do today. But I wanted to show you these because you can also use other patterns like this, like square patterns to create tiles and other seamless patterns like this. So when you choose your images that you're going to use for this, try to use a seamless pattern. That way, when you create it, you can go ahead and use that metallic embossed texture that you create and use that to create another seamless pattern. So anyway, I just wanted to show you this quickly because this one is, is a seamless pattern, but um, something like this you could get, I mean, it's clearly uh, a square and you could create a seamless pattern out of that, but it's going to look more like a tile uh, versus something like this that's just going to look like a background. So anyhow, I just wanted you to see that before we get started. Now we'll go ahead and get back to the tutorial. All right, we're going to start this tutorial by bringing in the graphics that we're going to be using. So I'm here in Photoshop. I don't have anything open right now, but I'm going to go to file open and I'm going to bring in this watercolor floral. Um, this is something that I picked up on Creative Market. You can use any JPEG image that you have to do this. So this is a uh, 1000 by 1000 pixel watercolor JPEG. I'm going to click on open. Now uh, what I'm going to do is grab this same texture. This is a seamless pattern. So we can come in to edit, define pattern, and I'm just going to define a pattern for this because I want to make a much bigger version of this. I'll just leave it at watercolor floral. So now that I have that, I'm going to make a much bigger file. So I'm going to go to file, new, and I'm going to make this new file about 3000 Let's go 3,500 pixels wide by 3,500 pixels height. We're going to leave our resolution at 72. Uh, if you want a higher resolution, you can go ahead and do that. Click create. So now we have a much larger document at uh, 3,500 by 3,500 pixels. And I'm going to double click there and I'm going to apply that pattern that we had. Grab that. Click OK. Actually, I'm going to make it much bigger. So I will bring it up to about uh, 555 is, is what I've got it at right now. And this is what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as a PSD file as well. So File, Save As. We're going to call this Watercolor Floral. 3500 and I usually name these like this just so I know the size of the image that I'm working with so I'm going to click save open up a new document our new document is going to be a 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels 72 resolution click create now we have a, this blank document. I'm going to go ahead and reset my colors here just by clicking on these two uh, this little icon right here and uh, just to leave this at black and white and then I'm going to come up to filter render clouds okay now I'm going to come up to filter filter gallery and I am here in all of these folders we want to go to the distort folder and we're using the glass filter inside the glass filter we're going to work with these settings so our distortion we're going to take all the way up to 20 and our smoothness will leave at about a um, we'll leave that at two and our scaling will go ahead and take all the way up as well so we have something like this it's pretty rough uh, and then we're going to go ahead and add a new filter we're going to come down here to this little um, new layer icon and we're adding a new filter here 
right here. Uh, these are our preset filters. The PSD document that we created earlier, we can actually load that in here. So we're going to come down to this drop down menu, click on load texture. Now remember, you can only do this with the PSD document. So if you have a JPEG, you have to convert it to PSD before this is going to work. So we're going to use this one, the floral uh, 3500. Click load. And we're going to take the scaling down all the way uh, to 50% and then our distortion. We'll actually leave the distortion, but we're going to work with the smoothness here. And you can see from this that we're not getting the result that we want. So we can come back to this bottom texture and take out some of that distortion that we had there. So maybe we'll leave it at about three and we'll bring up our smoothness. Because what we want is an um, embossed metallic look, not necessarily that foiled look. So uh, we're going to leave that, we'll leave smoothness at about eight. And then we can come back to this uh, watercolor texture and work with that again. Let's see, we can bring our smoothness down um, to get a crisper look. And of course, this is going to be really up to you and the look that you're going for. So you can go for something like this that's much more detailed. If you do do that, then you can come back here and work with your distortion of the background because right now all you're seeing are those clouds. You can bring the smoothness of this up and this is going to give you more of that metallic embossed look. For this one, we're going to go, we're going to leave our distortion of this watercolor texture all the way up to 20. Our smoothness will leave at three and our scaling is going to be down to 50%. We'll come back down here and see what we left this at. So here we have our distortion at 10. We'll go ahead and leave it there. And then we'll take our smoothness down to about five is fine and our scaling we can take up to 200. Click OK. If you don't like all of this dark color here, you can fix that easily. I'm going to add another layer and I'm going to go back in, do filter, render, clouds. And you see how we have all of these dark colors. I'm going to press the letter V on the keyboard. I'm going to zoom out a little letter Z on the keyboard and then just zoom out and then now the letter V to get these handles and we're just going to bring it out so that we're not getting so much of that black color. So we'll try this, see what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and crop this like that. And now I'm going to go back into the filter, filter gallery and we're going to see what this one looks like. So we're taking our distortion up to 20 smoothness. Um, I brought up to about 12. Uh, really what I'm looking for here is removing the noise around the texture, that embossing section of the texture, and we can leave that alone and then we can come back to the actual texture and kind of work with this as well, but it seems to be okay where it is. So we'll click okay. See, this is the original. You had a lot of black in there, a lot of black areas, and then this is the second one that we did that we kind of moved the black around a little bit. You still need those areas because you want to show highlight, shadow, reflection, all of that stuff. So that's fine, uh, but something like this is just too much. With this, uh, we'll come back in here to our adjustment layers and we're going to choose the hue and saturation. Make sure to check on colorize. And then you can go through and change some of the colors. Uh, just, you know, kind of choose something that you like. And just adding that hue and saturation actually helped this design out a lot as well. For this one, you probably want to go in and change the brightness and contrast, maybe uh, work on the levels. Now another thing that you could do with something like this is add a patina to it and that's just as easy as using a grunge texture or something like that. You can get those for free all over the internet. But I just want to show you an example of that. So I'm just going to add a pattern. These are the patterns that I'm using and it's kind of like a grungy 
style pattern just to overlay it on top and I'm using that blend mode overlay probably this would look best with something you know like uh, like a brown or this kind of color so this this orangey color with uh, the blend mode overlay or you could just use a simple transparent black and white overlay so if you just type in grunge overlays or something like that into a google search you'll find tons of free grunge texture overlays that you can put on something like this just to give it a little bit more of a weathered look to it and you can um, you know check it out and see what it's going to look like with different blend modes of course all of these blend modes on the top are going to darken it these are going to lighten it this is you know just kind of going through just to see what's going to look good with the texture that you choose but again, this is just another idea if you're looking for something more rustic or, you know, antique looking. To learn more about working with Photoshop, watch one or both of the videos up on the screen right now. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching.